Hi guys, sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. I recently had a very important interview to go to, so I spent the last few weeks doing a lot of research to ensure I wouldn't mess up or say the wrong thing at the interview. You know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today. Like, right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, Don't agree to take a polygraph. Anyways, I really like the Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's a great game. In fact, there were times while playing it that I thought I might actually like the remake more than the original. The characters are just so much more fleshed out than they were back in 1997. The game has probably the most enjoyable combat system of any JRPG I've ever played. And while the music has always been incredible, Hearing all these famous tracks being orchestrated for the first time is an entirely different experience. And despite there being a huge amount of filler content in the second half of the game, I can happily say that I enjoyed the vast majority of the remake. But then I reached the final chapter and had to witness my favourite video game story being warped into something different entirely. And while a lot of people praised remake's ending for switching things up significantly, I was far less impressed. Now I think it's important to point out that I have no problem with FF7's story being changed. I will always have the original to go back to if I don't like the new direction the remake is taking. However, I feel there were several different methods of changing FF7's story that didn't involve having to kill fucking Destiny itself. The final chapter of FF7 Remake is so out there and over the top that it's hard to know where the remake can even go from here. I mean, Cloud and the gang literally defeat both Sephiroth and the physical manifestation of Destiny in the final battle. What the fuck can they possibly fight in the sequel that would top that? There is a bigger problem I have with FF7's narrative however, and it's more to do with the people leading the project. Now I think it's important to point out that I think Tatsuo Nomura is an incredibly talented individual. I mean, just look at these character designs. They are timeless and so iconic. As a character designer, Nomura is top of his class. Tatsuo Nomura also knows how to design a fun combat system. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, I can't deny that the combat in these games is incredibly enjoyable. Nomura is a man of many talents. However, writing is not one of those talents. I understand that a lot of people enjoy the Kingdom Hearts series, and I would consider myself one of those people. They are fun games, and I have fond memories of playing through them for the first time. However, I just could never get on board with the story that tied all these games together. I mean, Kingdom Hearts is basically Final Fantasy characters hanging out with Mickey Mouse. It didn't need to be so fucking convoluted. In the beginning, things started off pretty well. The first Kingdom Hearts game tells an enjoyable and more importantly coherent tale about light versus dark. It was hardly the most complicated story ever written, but for a game featuring Disney characters, it was everything it needed to be. However, it was from the second game forward where things started to go off the rails. Dozens of characters were introduced, with practically all of them having convoluted backstories and nonsensical character arcs. Time travel is one of the most complicated topics to write about, because even the most intelligent minds out there don't fully understand it yet. But that doesn't stop Nomura from shoving it into practically all of his games. My main problem with Kingdom Hearts story however, is that even if you take the dozens of hours required to fully understand it, it's still full of plot holes and retcons. Fans always defend Nomura's writing, by saying stuff like, well, just wait until the next game is out and everything will begin to make sense. But every time a new game releases, the story just becomes more and more nonsensical. It's clear that Nomura just writes the first thing that comes into his head and decides to worry about the ramifications of this later. Again, I'm not saying you are wrong for enjoying Kingdom Hearts storyline, but even the most die-hard fans have to admit that the writing in these games is hardly Shakespearean. So when I heard Nomura would be responsible for directing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, 
I fully expected the story to go completely off the rails towards the end. And well, it does. Now that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy any of the remake's new plot ideas. The whispers are a very meta concept and I like that. So basically, throughout the game, these ghost-like figures will appear to stop certain events from occurring. For example, a whisper appears in the church to stop Aerith from falling to her death. Whispers also appear to protect the gang's car from being crushed by a helicopter after Cloud nearly kills them trying to show off. Basically, the whispers represent hardcore fans of the original Final Fantasy VII like myself. The whispers don't want anything to happen that deviates even slightly from the original game's narrative. Just like many real life fans didn't want the story to be changed at all in the remake either. The problem is that the behaviour of these whispers is incredibly inconsistent. For example, Avalanche member Wedge falls from this tower in the original game, which subsequently kills him. In the remake, the whispers conspire to make sure the same thing happens again. However, he survives the fall this time around. Then later on the whispers surround him again while a piece of debris crushes him. But he survives this too somehow. Then for some reason the whispers don't return to finish Wedge off until the final chapter hours later. Why didn't they show up while he was recovering at Aerith's house? They could have easily killed him then. Also, the whispers actually end up saving Aerith, Barrett and Tifa on several occasions. So why do they consider them as an enemy and actively try to defeat them in the final boss fight? Surely these arbiters of fate have to exist in order to stop the universe from falling into complete chaos. Despite how many good ideas the remake has in terms of new story content, there are still quite a few plot holes and sequences that require you to suspend your disbelief to a frustrating extent. So I decided to make a video to point out some ways the game's storyline could have been changed without resorting to, you know, time traveling ghosts. Number 1. Dialogue Choices one of the best ways a remake can make drastic changes to a story is to make the player responsible for those changes themselves. Plenty of games like The Witcher, Life is Strange and The Walking Dead allow players to choose how the story pans out. Instead of the whispers being in control of how events play out in the remake, dialogue choices could have filled that role instead. It might have taken a few more months of development time, but hey, if The Witcher and Mass Effect can do it, so can Final Fantasy. As it is however, Final Fantasy VII Remake has the occasional dialogue choices, but none that are responsible for drastically changing the game's plot. Hopefully, player choice will have more of an impact on the actual narrative in Part 2. Number 2. Multiple Endings The original Final Fantasy VII only had a single ending, so regardless of how many side quests you completed, or optional bosses you defeated, the ending would always be the same. What if in the remake, by completing certain side quests and obtaining certain items, you could actually change the game's final ending? What if by defeating all the optional bosses in the remake, you obtain an item that actually allows you to save Aerith's life? I believe having multiple endings would allow the game's plot to be changed in a way that wouldn't alienate a significant portion of the fan base. Number 3. Alternate Universe Now this one feels a little like cheating, because you could argue that Final Fantasy VII Remake is already taking place in an alternate universe. But I'm talking more about an alternate universe where the whispers aren't present at all. Square didn't need the whispers in order to change the game's story, all they needed to do was tell fans before release that the game was going to be set in an alternate universe and that significant changes would be coming to the story as a result. Boom. All of a sudden, Square have given themselves complete creative freedom to do whatever they want with FF7's story and they didn't need to resort to destiny ghosts in order to accomplish it. Again, I fully expect this video to get a significant number of dislikes. I understand a lot of people love the changes remake made, and that's fine, but I've got to stay true to what I believe in. 
and my honest opinion is that the ending is a convoluted mess. I just don't trust Nomura to wrap things up in a satisfying way by the end of this story. I hope I'm wrong, and if I am, I'll make a video apologising, and I'll even proclaim Nomura as an actual genius. I'll also donate money to a charity of his choosing. Or something, I don't know, I, di I didn't write a proper ending for this video. Bye.